All right, so I have layered up five different source images. They're all here on the side. Underneath them is a white background. And I have them all set to multiply mode, which means as I turn them on, I'm going to see through any white pixels, and they're all just going to darken each other. Now, one of these things is not like the other, right? And that's because from auto draw, just the default was a blue line, and I kept it. And I don't know if I love this one. I might just get rid of it entirely. So how do you get rid of a layer? You just select it, and then you hit delete. Or you can move it down to this trash can. And maybe I want to move in something else, like this one I thought was pretty good. But then this one is kind of weird, right? It's got these, this grid in it. It's from Google Images. If I change it to multiply, that grid is still going to be there because it's darker than white. So what we're going to learn now is how we can edit these. And so what I usually do is I take my favorite one. So let me say this one, and I'll move it to the bottom. And now, in order to edit it, to do more than just stretch it, because I can hit Command T, right, which is under Edit and Free Transform. I can use this to stretch it. I can right click. I can warp it. I want you guys to, to play with this more. But I want to make this like a jumble of, like all these drawings were on my desk and I crumple them up and put them all into a ball that goes into my trash. That's one way you can think of it, right? So don't think of there being an up or a down. You can really mess with its orientation. And now, in order to erase from it, do you guys cut your tags off your shirts? I hate tags on my shirt. So if I want to cut that tag off, I'm going to use my next tool down. So you have the move tool. We've been using that. I'm going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to lasso around that tag. I can do it pretty loosely. And then I'm going to hit delete. And if that layer is selected, I'm trying to delete from that layer. But something's going to happen. It's going to say, I can't do this because your request is a smart object and not directly editable. That's because smart objects that we brought in from the desktop they come in with this little black document square in the layer window. In order to get rid of that, we have to say we want these pixels to stay in Photoshop so that we can change them. So to do that, we have to rasterize them. We have to turn them into pixels in Photoshop. So we right click and we say rasterize. It gets rid of that little box. Now I can hit delete and it will remove pixels. So for those of you who, who did this early, some of you never got to the point where you rasterized it at all. Because without rasterizing it, you can't actually cut away. So I'm going to cut away from some of these big lines. It's just like using an X-Acto knife, like Arturo Herrera with the Disney coloring book. Right? And I'm not trying to be super exact. A tablet could help me be more exact. I could zoom in with Command Plus and get some of this, you know, layer by layer. Next, I turn on the next layer. And if I want to isolate it, I turn off the eyeball of the one behind it. And this one, I can hit Command-T, and I can warp it, I can flip it, I can stretch it, I can do different things. If I hold down Shift, remember you can... warp it directly, like squash and stretch. If I let, don't hold down shift, it will lock its proportion, so it will just scale. I can rotate it. Again, orientation doesn't matter, right? There's no up or down necessarily in a jumble. Okay, the problem with this one is even with multiply mode, I'm seeing all of these annoying gray grid shapes. So the next thing we're going to do is image adjustment. So if I go up to image at the top, this gives me control of the lights and darks. We're going to learn three image adjustments for this class. The first we're going to learn is levels. So levels is the one where we basically deal with lights, darks, and midtones. So if I use this dark triangle here in levels and I move it all the way, it's going to make all the pixels dark. <laughs> right. If I take the white one, it's going to make all the light pixels lighter. And then if I take this middle one, 
it's going to push the middle pixels lighter or darker. So it's always safest to start adjusting your levels with the midtone slider. These are called sliders. So I'm going to move that, that slider right to where we have about pixel content. And then I'm going to move the white to, to make all of those gray boxes that were middle gray, now they're white. And then I can darken my blacks a little bit. And then on multiply mode, when they layer up, that's how they'll look. Now I can use Command-T. But notice what that did. Because this is a smart object, it did that adjustment and it put it on a smart filter. It all gets very complicated until I right click it and I rasterize it. You have to rasterize it every time you adjust it? No. Once you rasterize it, there isn't any going back. And then when you change the level, it's on whatever menu you have selected, right? And yes. That right menu. Yeah, whatever layer you have selected or whatever selection within that layer. So if I drew kind of a a lasso around a certain part of it, I could just adjust that lassoed part. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. And now I might want to edit out. These are both rasterized layers. I'm going to edit out part of that Hawaiian shirt where it overlaps. And there's just a lot I can do, but I have to choose what to show you. So I'm just going to keep using my, my lasso and deleting from the Hawaiian shirt layer. And then I can also delete from the cowboy layer if there's something I don't want, like this part here, this little buckle, belt buckle. I can get rid of that. Okay, next layer. I've got this guy. I'm going to rasterize it. Right click and rasterize. That way I can use my, my lasso. And I'm just going to arbitrarily kind of cut shapes out of it. And then maybe I will command T and warp it. And then maybe I'll see how that looks with my other layers so far. And then I can hit command T and I can choose to change it more. So something that's really common in this assignment is you'll, you'll warp it to make lines line up, right? So now all these lines are lining up with the bottom of the cowboy hat. And I don't have any kind of aesthetic parameters. This doesn't need to look good. You just need to layer up the line art. But that's how you can control it and make it your own. And then I can continue to delete things, adjust things. It just gives us more practice of these controls. Right. And if you don't like it, you can always go back in your history or you can do Command Z. Take it back. All right, my next layer. This one's a little different, right? Because it's got this watermark. So what do I need to do before I can delete it? To get rid of the watermark or to delete any of the pixels, what do I need to do? I have to rasterize it. Very good. So right click, rasterize it. Now that little box is gone and it will let me select and delete. I can also do Command T. I can also stretch it. And if I don't want this, this is pretty much a full character design. <laughs> this could be like the Jim's logo. If I don't want that super recognizable, like what Arturo Herrera did with the Seven Dwarves and Snow White, I could get rid of some of these facial characteristics. Now that it's rasterized. And to show what I was talking about, I could just select part of it. And instead of deleting it, I could command T or transform just that selection. So if I do command T now with the selection active, it will just mess with this area, right? So I can kind of offset it. Now it's interesting, the white pixels are still there. So now they're covering up what used to be black pixels. Again, just ways of making it your own without making your own pixels. Okay, now how does that look with the others? Looks pretty chaotic, so I might just take my, my lasso and I might just do big sweeps and delete. So just I'm keeping just little lines from it. So 
till it looks a little bit more interesting. All right, that's four of them. Let's do my last one. Again, to isolate it, I might turn off the others. I can hit Command T. I can rotate. I can switch it down. Maybe I just want this cowboy hat to be on the bottom. Hit Return. I need to rasterize it. And then I can layer them all up. There we go. Now, one other thing I can show you is what if you have these blue line ones that we brought in. How do we turn the blue lines to black? And you can also do that in AutoDraw, but it's adjustment again. So I have to rasterize it, and then I need to go to Image, Adjustments, and we're only learning one adjustment for this project, Levels. So it's your lights and darks adjustment. And here, like the whites are the whites, right? The blacks are the blacks. So to make that blue black, I just want to push both of the midtones and the dark slider to the right. And basically all the way. Now the only problem with that is that these are what are called anti-aliased images. So I'll show you what I mean. Before they were black, these pixels kind of faded out at the edge to make it look cleaner. And so when we force all of those pixels to black, they'll start to look a little chunkier, which is fine for this project. It's just something good to keep in mind. And you're going to have little digital distortions sometimes. Now, there are ways to fix that that we will learn. But for now, this is just great. And then I'm going to turn it to multiply mode, let it all come through, and then I'll transform it. I've rasterized it. Now, what aspects of this do I want to keep? I'm going to show you a really cool technique. So this cowboy hat, I'm going to select that layer. It's got a lot of contained space. So I can use this next tool down. We've basically only used the top tools. I'm going to use what's called the magic wand. And if it's not on the magic wand, I think the default is the object selection tool. Click on it, hold down, it will open the drawer, click on the magic wand. That's what, how we're going to use that tool spot. We're going to use it with contiguous in this case. This means pixels that are touching each other. And I'm going to click on the, the inside of the cowboy hat there. And now I'm going to go through each layer, and I'm just going to hit delete. Now I'll show you what's going on. I use the lasso to select within the cowboy hat right there. But that selection can be moved between layers. It's like a stencil. So I can use it to delete from this layer. And I can use it to delete from this layer, even though there's nothing on it. I can use it to delete from this layer, even though there's nothing on it. And I can use it to delete from this layer. Now, how does that all come about? When I do that, that will clear that shape through all the layers. right? So what if I want to do it with the brim of the cowboy hat on this one? I select it with the magic wand. It clears it. And now I can move that between all the layers and delete it. How do you add the magic wand? So you just hold down on that slot and it will open the drawer. And then you go to the third one. All of the tools in the toolbar that have that little triangle in the lower right corner, that means there's more tools in the drawer. The wand isn't even over there. If the wand isn't there? Yeah. So click on these three dots at the bottom of the toolbar. And then say edit toolbar. And you should see it. And then you can drag it in. So the magic wand, you just drag it right into that tool. And I can come help. All right. So you see how that, that can kind of help a lot, right? I might take the holster from this one. And this video is probably almost done. Now, the important thing about selections with the magic wand or with the lasso is you have to deselect before you can make a new selection, right? So you can deselect by clicking on something else and making a new selection, or you can just hit Command-D, and Command-D will undo any selections you have.